So I got something. Now it's just white for you right here. However, I did get the DJI Mavic Air 2. Now I sold my Mavic Pro just because it was old. I'd used it for a long time. It served me really well and I enjoyed having it. However, I felt like it was time to do an upgrade. So I'd sold the Mavic Pro, got the Mavic Air 2, and I wanted to do this unboxing and really see if everything they were saying was really what they were saying it was. Because let's look at the specs between the two, the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air 2 while I slice this box open. So if you look at the Mavic Pro, what you'll get is a 12 megapixel camera. Not very impressive. Basically like I threw my iPhone up in the air and hoped that it snapped a good image. I would have to get the megapixel count and the resolution that I wanted to get and the ability to edit the photos by taking multiple exposures and merging those together either in a slight panorama or a HDR shot. So it really started to hinder a lot of the things that I was doing for my landscape aerial photography. But this one they're saying has a 48 megapixel camera, 48. Like they didn't go, let's put a 24 in, now let's go 32. They went all the way to 48 megapixels. And is it actually 48 megapixels? I'm not really sure because that seems like an exaggeration with how many megapixels that actually could be. Is the resolution really that good? So as I unbox this, here we have the drone. And it is, I mean, it's smaller than the Mavic Pro. Fits in the palm of my hand. I do have giant NBA size hands though. It is smaller, it's, it's like durable. It has that same durable feel as the Mavic Pro does. The camera and sensor obviously look a little bit different. You know, they've done a couple other models since the Mavic Pro, so I'm not too surprised there. Let's see what else is in here. The controller is totally different. I mean, you put your phone up in the top now of where you just like slide this open and put your phone down in there. And I like that a lot more. I really didn't like the controller of the Mavic Pro. But if you look at the comparisons here between these two, the megapixel count, and also I wanted to look more into the 8K hyperlapse. Is that legit? Like, am I going to be able to get a really smooth hyperlapse from start to finish? Because I've already seen some videos of where they start the hyperlapse and by the end, your drone's like bouncing up and down the whole time. Is the gimbal gonna stay sturdy? I have no idea. These are all huge question marks for me and big hesitations, but I decided to go ahead and, and pull the trigger on this and just bring it out and see what it could actually do. And I wanna take you guys along for the ride. What else do we have in here? Charger, cord, extra adapters, cord, don't know, propellers, propellers, and an empty bag. Also, another reason why I decided to get the Mavic Air 2 was flight time. I can't tell you how many times I almost crashed my Mavic Pro just because I was trying to get one more shot in before bringing it back and it almost didn't make it back. I know on their website, they say it would last something like 27, 30 minutes almost. And no, it's more like 15 if you're really doing some extensive work with it. This one they're saying gets a lot more flight time and I can't wait to try that out because more flight time means more photos. And honestly, aerial photography is something that I've barely scratched the surface on and the 8K hyperlapse is gonna help me with my newest interest in outdoor landscape photography and that's doing a lot of time-lapse photography and I really hope that the 8K hyperlapse lives up to the hype. We're gonna see, let's take this out in the field and really see how it acts when we actually fly it in the air. Is the megapixel count really up to the challenge? Is the hyperlapse really gonna function like they say it will? Let's go see. 
All right, guys, so basically where we are right now is a local spot that I know of. Couldn't really take this too far because of the current COVID-19 re-emerging in the United States, but I do have the drone out with me, and I want to test a couple things. Like I said, I want to test the hyperlapse, and I also want to test how well this takes photos because that's the main reason that I got this, and I can't tell you how many times that I've been to a location like this and and I thought if I could only get like that much further over to the right or the left, if, if I could just get this much higher off the ground, it would make this composition perfect. Now, I don't necessarily know if we're going to get a lot of sunset color, but what I do know is this is going to be a great test for the hyperlapse because I have seen some videos where it starts to shake a little bit in the wind, and there's probably like a 10 to 12 mile per hour wind right now, which probably has like 15 mile an hour gusts at times like I'm having right now. I think that'll be a great test for the drone, how well it can hold up doing that during high winds. And then also with the photo part, since there is going to be a lot of dynamic range at sunset, I think it's really going to allow me to test out how much detail can I pull out of those shadows, how much detail I can pull out of the highlights too. Will it overblow? Will it underexpose? Just based on the settings that I choose, I think we're really going to get a good look at how well this performs for landscape photography. So obviously the drone footage from the Mavic Air 2 is great, and that's not really too surprising to me. You know, it's not that far of a stretch from the Mavic Pro to the Mavic Air 2. These clips are all in 4K, you can film in 4K, it's really smooth and really direct, but I wanted to look at that hyperlapse feature too. So when you go to the hyperlapse menu, you can select your waypoint feature, and then you can add waypoints via GPS and it'll calculate where that is so you can see the waypoints at the bottom fly to the next point and you can add a next waypoint by clicking that little plus icon in the bottom corner and then the DJI drone will the aircraft is heading to the first waypoint and once it gets back to the original point, it'll start taking the images. Now I have set this, if you'll see in the bottom right corner, right under the histogram, at one one hundredth of a second, an ISO of 100, and I'm pretty sure it comes standard at like F2.8 or something like that. I wasn't really too concerned about the aperture, but it'll fly there and start taking these images at two second intervals. Now, when that starts, you basically can just set the controller down and wait it out because this has a countdown of how long it's going to take, as you'll see in the bottom of the screen to the left of the histogram, and it'll start working on that. Now, here's direct out of the camera what that looked like. As you can see, it starts out okay, but near the end, it gets a little wonky. And, and I tried to do some color grading and also some warp stabilizing with that. But as you'll see, it if you look at the trees, there's a little bit of a glitch and a little bit of a wonkiness right at the end of that, right where it still was from the first one. Now, I thought maybe that may have been my first attempt and just a fluke, so I tried another one here and it's just unusable. The, the drone was shaking. It was less windy in this situation than in the first. And again, I tried color grading and warp stabilizing those clips. Still did not look great. And in the 4K, for some reason, it makes that download of the 8K hyperlapse really dark in the shadows. I'm not really sure why that is. So this is basically what I got to in conclusion with the 8K hyperlapse, not a great feature.
Now, after I tested out the hyperlapse feature, I also wanted to see about these 48 megapixel images. So I shot this image, made some general edits to it, and this one is in 48 megapixels. But I also wanted to see how good these details were down close when I started working with the highlights, the shadows, when I started doing some features in the editing, some advanced edits like dodging and burning. I wanted to see how that impacted the quality and the sharpness of these. And I was really, really impressed on how sharp these images actually were, did some gradient work and some advanced features and also some Photoshop techniques. And here's the before and after of what I was able to get and also the finished image here that you see. The detail in the bottom of the image, the shadows, the highlights, is surprisingly better than I thought it was gonna be. And I photographed this at 1 60th of a second, F2.8 ISO 100, and I was able to lift the shadows, dim the highlights, and get a lot of detail out of all of those features. So now that we've seen examples of both, we can say, okay, would you recommend this drone for aerial landscape photography to get some of those detail shots? I would say overall, if you're trying to get some time-lapse hyperlapse work with this, with the 8K hyperlapse, that feature is total garbage. I would not recommend getting it for that feature. However, if you are looking at it from a still photography standpoint, I would definitely encourage you to highly consider the Mavic Air 2 because the quality of the image and the ability to further edit the image is definitely there. Highly recommend for that.